there are rumors. There are rumors about Tesla. And this is a new idea, right? Oh my gosh. Yes, there's rumors everywhere. And some of them are even true or could be true or maybe false. Anyway, I have got the guy who usually can get inside the rumors or has a source, has an opportunity, has somebody out there that can whisper in his ear what the reality is or isn't, or at least that's what he claims. Brian White, you're back from CES. How are you doing? I'm good. I am cold, but I am good. My office is very, very big, and my heater is quite small, and my office is uh, struggling to keep up, you see. <laughs> it is, it is, you know, it's 35 in here, but uh, I'm wearing two sweatshirts and a jacket, and I'm feeling all right, my friend. Well, you know, after watching those football games over the weekend, I don't think you have it. You know, what was that guy doing with that shirt off at 12, 17 below zero wind chill? I mean, give me a break. Drink, drinking aggressively, I assume. <laughs> uh, I would I would I would point out before we start that not only do I sometimes have sources in some places and it's only a few and it's not in every location. What I really have is a very strong BS meter uh, and uh have studied this deeply enough for long enough that a lot of things that people will accept as fact are uh, sometimes transparently ridiculous. And I'm uh, pretty good at seeing through those kinds of rumors. And here I thought when you put that uh, that thermometer up a minute ago, I thought that was your BS meter and you were metering me. And I was uh, registering 35. I was like, what's going on here? That's pretty good on the Randy scale. <laughs> <laughs> so, so speaking of bs you told me that uh, ces the consumer electronics show you spent multiple days there and you said that pretty much everything that was that you saw of value has already been covered to death is there one thing that you saw there that was the thing that you still dream about now that you're home <laughs> so the big theme this year was AI. Everything yes. was AI. Yes. Goodyear, for the first time ever, had a booth at CES with AI. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> it's because they've taken tire pressure monitoring systems to the next level with embedded sensors in their tires. Not designed for you and I, but for fleet managers, uh, because it allows them to detect things like uh, lateral force. So if you've got one driver in particular who likes to take corners too aggressively, it will show up in the data and it can be managed. Wow. So it not only tells keeps track of tread depth and general wear and general health and leaks, but it it tries to form a bigger picture finding trends. Wow. So AI was the theme for everything. There was a bunch of autonomous companies there. There were a bunch of LIDAR, radar, and other vision sensing systems there, not aimed at you and I again, but aimed at other businesses. A lot of B2B stuff that was great to see. Uh, but these shows are 30% reality and 70% art demonstration. And even that might be a little generous to the reality part of it, because you'd have companies like Kia showing, here's a van we hope to have out in the next two years, uh, an electric versatile van that can be a cargo van or a passenger van. But the one they showed was still not real because it was cartoonish in its dimensions. The windows were too large to roll down into the doors. And this isn't what it's going to be and then they're going to have bigger ones and smaller ones i get it and then also these are going to be future pods that can be anything including elevators and you're like well i can't believe they dedicated a cgi budget to that but great it's very fun uh you have to those art projects are the reason we go yes. the reality part of it is what they're actually trying to show. Uh, Xiaopeng was there with their flying car that yeah. they will never build, never build. But I made a video about it because I was explaining that any technology that they develop as part of this program could wind up in a real car. Lighter right. batteries, lighter materials. Uh, the styling cues alone are a lot of fun and keep their designers happy which is what you need. And then you've got this Halo product that brings everyone to your booth to see the cars you're actually making. So in those regards, I would call it a success because CES doesn't, even though Xiaopeng is not going to be selling in the US in the next two to three years for sure, they may eventually. And CES is a global show. Right. So it helps other markets where they actually can sell today. 
Okay. Well, there, there you have it in a nutshell, folks, the CES show. And uh, uh, the, going back to our original topic now, which is rumors and, ru and rumors and more rumors, the number one rumor that I thought was interesting last week, even though it's a very small part of the business, was the rumor that the Roadster is maybe weeks away. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Wouldn't that be something yeah. if true? Oh. If true. Oh. So the tweet was a secondhand account of a gentleman who went into a service center and overheard someone saying, oh, two of our techs got called back to the mothership to learn how to do repairs on the Roadster. That's premature. That's not the right timeline. If I reported everything that I heard at a service center as fact, <laughs> my channel would have no credibility because service centers generally are very good at what they do. And this is not what they do. This is something well outside their scope. It's more likely that those engineers were called back to learn how to work on Cybertruck. Wouldn't that make sense? Right. right. Uh, we haven't seen any footage from the sky of anything at Fremont that looks different. Uh, we haven't heard any rumors on the ground. I haven't heard any mumblings from parts suppliers, though I don't work with all parts suppliers, just a handful, but enough that I saw Highland coming months in advance. Uh, so uh, this is sexy and salacious. It frustrates me that something that's so transparently flimsy uh, gets millions of, of engagements uh, millions of impressions while the reality behind it gets just nothing, just nothing. Oh, and that's the nature the CES show again, <laughs> again, the art, wins. The, the art wins, but in this case, social media loves juicy rumors. I sure. can't help it. It's human nature. Yeah. And it frustrates me because it, you look at it and go, well, if I just started lying, I'd be more successful. Yeah. But I like my soul, I guess. Oh, there you go. So, I have not seen anything that would indicate Roadster is imminent uh, or even coming this year at all. And I made a video maybe a year, year and a half ago explaining why Roadster is the lowest priority. And it's because right. it's it's a small production num a number. There, it's not going to be a huge volume. And they've already got the money for the first thousand. And the next thousand or two are already given away for free. So... There's a lot of, there's a very limited motivation to get it out there, apart from it being a halo car. Right. And they already have a fantastic halo in the Cybertruck. So uh, I love the rumor. I, I have not seen any evidence. And you know, uh, my desire, my commitment to sticking to fact-based reporting means I am sometimes late to the story. I am sometimes last to the story. But it means that I never bite off on nonsense. <laughs> well, speaking of, well, this could be nonsense, not nonsense. There was a, a, a car carrier, a big old truck carrying a number of Tesla vehicles. And a couple of them were under wraps. And they had a very, very odd shape. And for a couple of days there, like everybody and their third cousin had an opinion on whether those might be junipers they might be gen 3 cars they might be who knows what they might be uh have have you uh, concluded anything out of all of that uh kerfuffle i have so okay. if you if you look at the wraps uh so the first question is is it the is it next gen is it the compact and it is in my opinion much too large for that but it's also of a fairly conventional shape uh, then I saw an account that went ahead and uh, compared it physical point by physical point to the existing Model Y and found that that's a Model Y without a hood and fenders and without the trunk lid. Uh -huh. It's just it's just the body of the car. Uh, so that and that makes more sense where the lines hit on the back uh, for the hatch are the same as the existing Model Y. Could it be the Juniper? Absolutely. That would be a very strong theory. I don't know why it would be wrapped. I don't think it's for secrecy because I don't think if you were to look at a 
Highland, you know, a refresh model three body compared to an old body. I don't think you'd be able to spot the difference without no. the hood and fenders and the trunk lid. I don't think it'd be sufficiently different to that from the air. You could tell that that's right. something new. Right. So this could be the refreshed model Y body, but I, I would assign the odds of it being anything to do with the Gen 3 at about 0% with a margin of error of plus or minus 1. So minus 1% is about where it could be. All right. Well, on that subject, do you have any updates on the Juniper? No. Um, it is... I, I haven't seen anything that would lead me to believe it is imminent either. Um, the sales of the Model Y are still going very strong, and that's the biggest reason to not worry about it yet. The other is that they're trying to, the team that was dedicated to getting the Cybertruck ru running and ramped is either finished or winding down. That leaves them some headroom. I think their next priority is dialing in the compact. Mm -hmm. And when the compact is dialed in, that's when they can start thinking more about the Model Y refresh. The biggest reason the Model 3 refresh had to happen is you've noticed it's a much better car. Oh, it's yeah. got the double, it's got the uh, double glass all the way around. It's got infotainment in the back. It's got better everything. Everything. And, and it's the same price. Yeah. They didn't have to increase the price to get a better car because the Model 3 had a lot of built-in inefficiencies. And I think... The Model Y has fewer of those, meaning that there's less motivation. The, the savings per unit is not going to be as great as it was from the Model 3. So why would they rush to do it when it's not urgent and other products are? I saw the Model 3 coming from miles away because I saw the parts coming. No. The, the, the Model Y refresh is going to have a lot of parts in common with the Model 3, so I may not see them coming. They may just be, they may be shipping parts for trial Junipers today, and I wouldn't see them because they are Model 3 parts. Right. Uh, the, the big motivation to get the Juniper done is so that you once again have parts commonality and you're not carrying twice as much inventory. But uh, to be determined how much that's that's in the process. So I think we are still looking at the very earliest, the end of the year, uh, but it may be later than that. Well, the motivation for me to get the Model Y Juniper getting under production, especially in the United States, is if we're going to get really bigger, bigger numbers out of Austin, uh, a need to go to second, I mean, th third and fourth shifts, a reason to go to the second line or whatever. I'm always a little unclear as to exactly why they're sitting at under 200,000 a year right now compared to the 500,000 capability or even a million capability um, is if we did the refresh, I think the the sales would go up. Uh, I think the, the, the Model 3 to me is now the car I would want. Uh, the Model Y, my wife loves the shape, loves the look, et cetera, doesn't like the suspension so much. Uh, and for folks like you that need, you know, kids in the back seat, having the entertainment center in the back seat has got to be a huge plus. So I see a lot of benefits uh, to a Model Y refresh that could move metal. So forgetting all of the, you know, matching of parts and all the rest of those efficiency issues at the factory level, I'm a marketing guy. I want to see him move the metal. And I think that would help. Uh, yeah, I I would love to have the a refreshed, whatever we believe the refresh of the Y is going to be with that infotainment, with the quieter, with the softer ride. I'd love to have all of that instead of what I have now. Uh, but I knew I couldn't wait. Right. So right. I'm, I'm still very happy with my car. And when that new one comes out, there will be people who will upgrade just because they want the, those features. Um, and that also helps uh, get more cars on the secondary market if, uh, for used buyers, which is right. great too. So another, this is not exactly a rumor, it, it, kind of like a rumor. So we have a shutdown in Berlin for two weeks because of uh, the Red Sea conflict causing parts that are coming out of Asia to have to go around the Cape, Cape, Horn, Cape, Cape of Good Horn, Good Cape, <laughs> the Cape, let's just call it the Cape. Anyway, 
which takes 14 days extra, blah, blah, blah. So they got to shut down for 12, 14 days, whatever it is. But maybe there's a little mindset out there that might think, well, demand doesn't seem that great in Europe anyway. So maybe they just they're making an excuse. What do you think? Boy, uh, I don't think they're making an excuse. That seems like a pretty outrageous one to make and uh, a bit out of character. Um, you have to have not 99% of the cars to make a car. You need to have uh, uh, of the parts. You need 100% of the parts. So if there are shipping delays, and we know that there are, then yes, that makes sense. Uh, depending what the parts are, sometimes they can offload them and ship them by air. But even that is a huge thing. And then what do you do? Unload half a ship? No, they have to go all the way around the entire continent of Africa. And as Edna always said, no capes. That's important uh, because it uh, causes problems. So, so uh, this is a bump. And I don't think by the end of the quarter, we'll have seen a meaningful drop in production because losing two weeks in January uh, is something you can make up in February and March. January is seasonally the lowest uh, sales month for autos across the industry. So I'm not as worried about it. And I'm and we know Tesla's parts and logistics supply chain is very uh, uh, agile and robust. So I'm not super worried about it. All right. The last not exact again, this doesn't quite meet the criteria of rumor, but it's the last um, kind of big issue that's out there, although it's kind of gone away a little bit. Um, and that is this business of the price rise last week in uh, the price increase. I'm sorry, <laughs> price decrease uh, in China with a 6% decrease on one of the Model 3s uh, and a 3% de uh, decrease on one, one of the Model Ys uh, and various other decreases. Um, so people would say, well, there must not be enough demand. What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. What's happening in China? Um, so uh, is this temporary? Is this, uh, is this because they're, they're getting a lot better, uh, production? I know, um, I saw where BYD dropped some prices a lot. Um, I think somebody else dropped prices. Oh, oh uh, that was in the United States. So that Volkswagen. was Volkswagen. Well, yeah. Volkswagen. Volkswagen in, in China. I don't know if you saw has a promotion through the end of January where they've dropped the, I think the IDs three and four to like. 27,000 US, something outrageously cheap, to which I responded on X, if this doesn't get Volkswagen back on the on the board in January, they're done in China. Done in China. If drop it, if you're going to lose 10, $20,000 per car, and you still can't sell them, you're in trouble. I think Volkswagen and BYD have done their price reductions in January because January is the softest month for car sales and they know the competition is fierce in that market. I think Tesla did it because they have the margin and especially on the Model 3, they now have increased uh, production efficiencies that make that car even cheaper to build provided you can keep the volume strong, which this will help. And I think that this is no big deal it is not temporary in the sense that February, we're likely to see it increase, but it, the prices may go up as we get closer to summer and the strong buying months uh, re recover and return. If interest rates start to come back down, we could see those prices increase, uh, but they've got, Tesla has good competition in China. Yeah, uh, The cars like the BYD Seal, which there was a video yesterday or today, uh, on car wow comparing the two the european spec byd seal with the model 3 uh, refresh and the cars were remarkably well matched uh, they did determine in the end that the tesla was the slightly better choice but that byd seal in china is like a 30 35 thousand dollar car with with well equipped uh, the disadvantages were things like it's quite a bit heavier uh, but that's something China will work on. But I don't think buyers today care if their car is 500 pounds heavier. Uh, might have been more than 500 pounds. I want to say it was 2,200 kilograms. So it was quite heavy. Wow. But but people care about the driving experience. Yeah. And the driving experience in this car that is significantly cheaper in China is a better experience. That's why BYD is doing so well in China 
in addition to the fact that they have more models, which doesn't always automatically help, but some people just need more choices and it allows buyers to more precisely fit their use case. So the price cuts in China, not bad news. Uh, it's good news for consumers. If anything, it's bad news for competitors because all it means is that people like Volkswagen will have to increase their losses per unit. So when these comparisons, because I haven't watched that video yet, when these comparisons are made, do they ever even mention things like over-the-air update and fart mode? No, no, they don't. Uh, the over-the-air update they should mention. I don't know what BYD's policy is, but I imagine they have some kind of over-the-air updates. They looked at the driving experience, the zero to you know the quarter mile because that matters. Uh, they look at. Um, how easy it is to lock in your car seats. Uh, they look at uh, shoulder, you know, space in the back seat, headroom. They look at the th they look at the silly things like this, the quickness, but then they also look at things like the driving experience generally. Going ar going around the track in the rain, uh, the BYD tended to rotate a little on them. He's like, mm. well, it's fun, but I don't think I'd want that on the road. Uh, I don't think that's a good thing in that regard. Uh, so there's, yeah, it's, it was, a, it's a very good review. Carwow does great work. All right. Well, that's interesting, but I, I, I just don't see how any of these cars are going to compete until they start adding, you know, the really important stuff, uh, you know, uh, you know, whoopee cushions are fun and we need fun in our lives. And, and I'm, I'm being only half uh, serious here. And if your car can't play La Cucu Racha as the lock tone, what are you doing with your lives, guys? Come on. I mean, get with it. Become a little sophomoric in life. It pays off. It really does. <laughs> Brian, as always, or you say as sometimes, but I'm going to say in your case, <laughs> it's as always. It's really fine having you on this channel and sometimes amusing my crowd. So, uh <laughs> Thank you so much for participating. Uh, we might have you on again, even in minutes, which will be produced later, but you'll be doing something in another show shortly. Hey, to all of you out there, it's been great talking to you. Bye, Brian.